All right. Welcome to the straight red card. Um, today it was the big announcement. Um, some of you might be listening to this on the same day if I can get it out before midnight. Mm-hmm. But regardless, today was the big announcement for the October Windows roster by Greg Verhalter. Of course, if you wanted to actually find the presser that he did or the media thing that he did Good on YouTube or on the U.S. fucking <laughs> soccer page, you would not have been able to find it. All they're going to do is just list it. Now, I did, I did manage to find some some answers to some questions, but I had some serious questions I needed answered, and I thought that presser might help us during the show. But the U.S. soccer site sucks so hardcore; they are so bad and so insular. Um, they don't give you any information. They give you the raw bones. That's it. They don't the give good, you any meat. Yeah. No meat. The good news is, if we do find the uh, the presser. Then we've got another. Uh, we've got we got another uh, video to do later on. So. Oh yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> and definitely. I hundred percent agree with you, man. The U.S. U.S. soccer website sucks donkey balls. It is absolutely it the fucking worst. It is. I mean, come on. It was so much better early on when the, when USSF originally had a website and it was out there and it was just yeah a simple stupid page that was so nice and then they started getting cutesy with it. It just got horrible. Nobody updates it. God, trying to find trying to find any form of content like well, what's what's up most up to date news with U.S. soccer? That was three months Dude, ago. What the, the fuck? I know they used to have a whole thing called the statistics section. This is mm-hmm. many years ago. You could go in there. You could look up every U- USA game that was ever played and who won, who played, who scored. You can't get any of those statistics anymore from them because they're morons. And they don't know what the fans want. And frankly, they really don't even care. You know that. And I, look yeah. at me. I'm I'm uh, censoring myself because of the uh, don't swear too much in the first minute. I already well, dropped an F bomb. So it's, it's just it's just like the rated R ratings. We've said one. Let's ride this minute out, which should be in three, two, two. one. No. So, um, <laughs> but I mean, how hard would it be for the USSF to have their YouTube channel stream the presser, like live stream it, and then just keep it on its page? I mean, they it wouldn't could be even... there. They don't have to do anything special. Just live stream it, and yeah. you're done. You're done. I know. And, you know, I get the feeling that it's, you know, they have like a janitor in the basement of USSF who runs the website and he just kind of pitches in whenever he can. I mean, all they wouldn't even need to hire anybody. They go down to the Chicago zoo, get a chimpanzee, put him in a seat, teach him a few fucking buttons and bam, he could have that live press conference up on YouTube. So we all could watch it, but no, like I went to the U S uh, U S soccer um, uh, official U- YT page, and the last thing they have are about the women's games. They haven't talked about men's soccer since September, early September. Like, September 6th was the last yeah. thing they did on U.S. soccer, and I think that was the, uh, the behind-the-scenes video they Behind did. Behind the crest, yeah. yeah. And just just to get the roster, I had to navigate through and I had to selectively pick the U.S. men's national team, and then scroll down to the news there, rather than just seeing, well, the newest news possible should be on the home page. Front page. 27-man roster, not 26 this time. Berhalter's learning. We got 27 players now. (laughs) Plus one. (laughs) Boy, he didn't learn much, did he? And we'll get into that. We'll get into that. (laughs) But but. it's how how is it not being updated in the sense that there's brand new news, even on your site, that's not on the front page? Boggles my mind. I know. Obviously, getting traffic and being informative on their own website is not a priority. And big surprise, it's never been a big priority for them to to be informative and to give out information and to make it uh, available and easy to find. No, I spent a half an hour looking for that presser. Nothing except for some quotes from it. (laughs) Um, So anyhow, let's get to this lineup. Um, the, the just just an overview thought first, just mm-hmm. so we can get out of the way. But Polisic and Reina are injured, so they're not going to be here regardless, right? Correct. No, well, so, the, well, Berhalter said that, yeah, Polisic might be an option to call in the window, but don't uh, hold your breath is basically what he said. Yeah, he said it was highly, highly unlikely. No, um, and quite frankly, at this point, I don't want Polisic to come 
I want him to get fully healed, get match fit again, and then then go and do it. Yeah, I don't want him limping around our field when he's not 100%. I mean, we keep hearing from Tuchel, well, he's maybe it's a game day by day, game by game. Well, as far as I understand, what Greg said today is they're not even training with the team. Either of them, Ballistic or Randall, have not even started training with the team. So that means they're way out of this. And, you know, it's, to, uh, what, two days from now is October. And then there's another week, and then we're playing. So there's yeah, just not it, enough time. And again, at, the, time. at this point, just, just keep Pulisic out. Let him recover. Rain is a no-go, definitely. Let them both just recover, rejuvenate. We have depth. And quite frankly, if Berhalter would have called up everybody uh, that he has the option to, we probably would have been fine. We still probably will be fine. I'm not saying that we're we going to be, be fine. If there's but. one <laughs> position, if there is one position yeah. that I am like, okay, that's no biggie. I can handle well, Pulisic and Reyna not being there because we've got Aronson. We've got Wea on the roster. We've got Hoppy on the roster. We've got guys that can play that position. Now, granted, Areola will probably play more than some of those guys. But, <laughs> you know, um, we have space. At, we have depth, as you said, at those positions. So it's okay. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. No, but I mean, just looking at the last, looking at the last window and how injuries came about, why stick at 27? Why not I, call in somebody like Conrad? Yeah, let's have, let's run five out. You know, he may not play. Uh, Ariel might not play. Who knows? But why not call them in? And you have the ability to, to rotate the players around. Exactly. Rather than, rather than just saying, well, you know, he only brought ugh. six. He only brought six forwards. Six. You could have squeezed a thirty-man roster. You could have gotten um, Conrad on this roster just to continue to give him more experience. You could have got Sergeant on this roster. I know he couldn't play the game away at Panama, but still, again, maybe a goal for well, him in this. This would give him confidence. Who knows? You could have brought him. But there are other guys that got screwed too, like Pfock. Pfock, I mean, yeah. I mean, I would, I would have, at this point, I would have taken Pfock over Sergeant just because I want Sergeant to find himself and find his form. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't, uh, and, I don't. and you're, you're hearing news from uh, Norwich and stuff like that. Uh, uh, Farke has uh, some uh, nice quotes for uh, for him, but you know, so did the Bremen coach. Bremen coach really loved him too. Um, and the, the big thing is he needs to find his form. He needs to find uh, at least a goal. Start getting that uh, that drive back in there. He um, needs to be less likable. Yeah. He, ne he needs to work on being less likable, and he needs to be more of a killer. But we've talked about that ad nauseum at this yeah. point. You know? I mean, he just but, I mean, you go, you go back and you read comments from people, not just on our, not on our videos by any means, but on Twitter, on Facebook, and people are like, ah, don't like Sergeant. He's not good. He doesn't score goals. I'm like, well, I mean, go back through all of our catalog. We, we bring up the fact that he hasn't scored that many goals, but the fact that he does a shit ton else off the ball, but well, well not off the ball, but uh, outside of the goal scoring area. And then we, we talked, like you mentioned, we talked about this a ton. Well, and in his limited presser where uh, coverage that I've been able to read, um, and not the whole thing, unfortunately, but he does mention that there was a, you know, a whole Rona aspect that he had to consider. And so we do see players possibly not all together. That's not the reason that it didn't make the team, but, you know, and we'll get into Horvath in a second, yep. but Sergeant, same sort of thing. And it would have hurt Polisic as well. But then again, we brought Reem. And we brought Anthony Robinson, who aren't going to be able to play the Panama game. So it can't all be the Rona uh, red list thing. It it has to also do with, you know, form and confidence and who Greg's so, comfortable with. Yep. And it's all funny right. It's funny because you brought this up and you brought up uh, uh, like uh, Anthony Robinson won't be able to play and Reem won't be able to play. I, I think at one spot outside of the wings, I think our center backs are secure in the sense that we can survive without Reem for the Panama game. <laughs> right, right, right. But saying that, we look at our left back options, and, mm -hmm. and it's Bello and it's and it's Robinson, and Robinson can't be there for the uh, for the uh, Panama game, so that leaves Bello and um, well, I guess we're gonna pigeonhole Dest yes. as an option. Mm -hmm. But you know who would have been a nice option? Who would have? Who, who would have been a great to fill in both right and left? <laughs> it's just yep. Scally. I mean, yep. we bring we bring in more, and I like more. We've talked about more all throughout the Gold Cup. 
gave him praise, said, I can't believe he worked his way back into the national team picture with such gusto. But since the Gold Cup, he hasn't played. And Sergio Des had a really shitty game today, by the way. Yeah, well, I mean, they lost three to nothing, dude. Three oh, to nothing to uh, well, who was it? Um, Benfica. Yes, yes, it's Benfica. Yeah, that's right. And then it, to add injury to insult, the Benfica U19s crushed the um, uh, the Barcelona U19s for nothing, just you know, to add insult to injury. You know, dynasties, dynasties fall. And yes. uh, they, they had a nice decade, decade and a half there. Um, but it just, Messi. They, you know, yeah, somebody else, some other team in La Liga is going to take the mantle and run for a couple of years and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, how, how nice would it have been to say enter the panel game with still two left back solid options and yeah. not have to rely on one of our right back, true right backs. And I'm not saying that Scali is a true right back, but he's playing left back and right back in Bundesliga. Consistently, yeah. 90 I mean, minutes, like for like the last six games. I mean, come on. The only thing I can possibly uh, hope happened is that Burhalter called uh, Munchen Gladbach, GM slash manager, uh, both. And they said, listen, Joe's really getting on with our team. We think he's he's really solid, and we we you know we're really we have injury issues. So if he we let him go and he gets injured, we're really screwed as a club. And so if you could leave him off this roster just this one time until we get healthy, we'd really appreciate it because we are already you know we're hurting at left back and now we're hurting at right back because we have so many. That's the only conversation I think possibly justifies, well, I and think... that doesn't even justify it for me leaving Scally off of this roster just to get acclimated, even if he rode pine for three games. Well, and that's the thing. Uh, I'll jump back to uh, a topic because I'm going to bring up on Scally there anyways, but uh, that's the thing. Say if we take more out of the equation, we're left with two right backs, two left backs, and Joe Scally could play both positions or he doesn't see time. He could still come into the camp, get acclimated to the system, get, get start developing that chemistry with the other players, Maybe see some bit times. Who knows? Maybe start. Pepe started. He didn't have any time whatsoever with the national team. And we go on from there. But, I mean, it just it boggles my mind that why you invited more over him. And, again, I, we like more. I like more a lot. But – and I, yeah. I, I don't I don't have this. They mentioned it. Hold on. Uh, here we go. I got it right here. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Greg Berhalter on uh, Joe Scally. Uh, I had a call with Joe probably about 15 minutes ago. I was explaining to him the reasoning, but also letting him know that, uh, that he's a guy we're excited about. He's play, uh, He's been playing in the Bundesliga as wingback, sometimes as a fullback, and doing a decent job. Most impressive uh, is that at his age, he's able to compete at that level. I think he'll be a key, contrib key contributor in the future. What we're talking about right now is guys who have been somewhat uh, been through it before. We look forward to getting Joe integrated. Well, fuck, that's what he, could, that's what he said about it. So there you, you go. Have, you could have integrated him, you stupid fuck. Yeah. But you only took twenty-seven <laughs> players. But you, could, top, yeah. you, you could take what was that? Somebody quoted the other day. Well, I don't know what country it was. They they called up fifty-three players to their it's roster. Bolivia, Bolivia, yeah. I mean, it's uh, we we can call up as many as we want, dickhead. You could have brought in thirty. At least 30. You could have included Scally. Just get him acclimated yeah. <laughs> and integrated into the team. It's, this is just mind-boggling well, to me. Yeah, this is, this is the issue a lot of people are having in the sense of that. Again, you could look at the roster, the calls in general, and be like, well, that's fucked up. But now we, we know exactly what he was thinking. He wanted players who've been in, implemented into the system ready to go. But, I mean, you've got to look at it. Look at the uh, – when was more uh, uh, acclimated to the system? He was acclimated during the Gold Cup, and he was thrown into it. Yes. So why not? Why not? Why not? Why, why bring a guy who's been sitting, who's been riding pine for three months, two months, three, two, two months. Yeah. Two sure. months. Yep. Sure. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, over, over a guy who's been consistently playing for Gladbach consistently. Yeah. We can make out 90 minutes, you know, and that's the, so Greg thing to say in an interview. I mean, it is so Greg. It's like, just give us a fucking straight answer, dude. Come on. Well, Stop he did with the platitudes and He's like, bullshit. Uh, you know, we we're looking to have we're looking to have Joe as a future player, key contributor to the team, but he's not acclimated to our system yet. Well, when the fuck are you going to acclimate him in the exactly. future? Exactly. 
When yeah, meet World Cup? When's it going to fucking happen? Could have acclimated him right now. <laughs> right now. And during oh, this man. window, he could have been practicing with the team, getting, uh, you know, to, to know the team, the guys. And, uh, yeah, just to, uh, some of this, uh, I'm going to call them burhalterisms because the way he answers questions is such gibberish most of the time. It's not a real answer, though, that he's for the future. Brett, it's that's not an answer. The answer would be a real honest answer would be, yeah, I'm really happy for Joe. He's doing really good at his club, but we're not convinced he's ready yet um, to play for the U.S. Yeah. national team. So you, that you would can, have been a more like, honest answer. You can play. It's like he's saying you can play wing back for Gladbach, but you're not at the level to play for the United States men's national team at this point. Or, or or he could have been really, <laughs> really honest. Exactly. And just say he could have said, OK, I'm going to be really honest. I'm not comfortable with new guys right now. I need to be really comfortable. I need my ball, my ball sack snuggled through this next three games. And anybody who gets in the way of that, that ball sack snuggling and makes me nervous at all, or makes me uncomfortable, or it's a, like a new cog that I got to make sure I'm paying attention to when I've got a really important three games to be focusing on, not the cogs. I don't want to worry about a new cog. I got a, a game to f- fucking win here. But he, well, but that's a lazy. That's if that's the answer. That's lazy too. But that's that doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, uh, Pepe was new a new cog. He brought him in regardless. And I understand maybe there was the whole uh, concern of losing him to the Mexican national team, and you know maybe he felt not, not felt compelled to, but it may, he's been looking at Pepe. He's like, hey, this kid's baller. He's scoring a ton of goals for F- FC Dallas. We need to get him in here, but if he's willing to bring him in, not acclimated to the system, you know, not really knowing the team and the, uh, the chemistry between everybody. Uh, I mean, how can you not, how can you go about saying like, well, we can't bring Joe in because he's not acclimated? I mean, it's the Maybe. exact same argument for a number of players that are on the team right now. Well, maybe playing center forward's just a lot a, a dumb dumbed down position in Greg's system. <laughs> You don't need to. There's not much thinking to do. Although yeah, Greg, Bro, Greg did there, say, like, "Oh, geez, that that fucking nine position. Uh, we'll just have him check back into our defensive third and uh, you know whatever you know." Well, Greg did say that Pepe <laughs> didn't play the position correctly in the first half when when he pressed. He said, "I didn't want yeah. Pepe Pepe to press. Our nines pressed. don't press. Our nines don't press. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're gonna play a high press on occasion, the center forward's gonna have to press too. Yeah, that's a bunch of that wonky talk uh, that he did with." Um, What's his face? Anyhow, there you go. I'm so specific. With Bobby, What's with, Bobby. His, with Bobby Warshaw. Sorry, Bobby. Yeah. Um, all right, goalkeepers. Let's just start from there. Everything's normal there. Johnson, Stefan, Turner. I think um, that made sense. The so, only thing that didn't make sense is I thought we'd bring one more, even so if it was a, a this, young kid like a Dunze. I'm I'm I'm, perf- I'm perfectly fine with how this how he's handled this because you and I were predicting that he was going to have four goalkeepers in his. Uh, 30 man roster. Of course, we yeah. didn't go 30 man roster. So instead of doing a 30 man roster, Burhalter went, Well, I can't bring four goalkeepers, especially when two of them are guaranteed not to play, <laughs> more or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we need somebody at Panama. So instead of bringing a second goalkeeper that's not going to play, which is Horvath, he clearly sees Horvath as his number three right now. I'm just going to bring in Sean Johnson, who's capable of playing all three games. And let's so, face it, Horvath had a chance to win the winning the, the starting role. They gave him a start because Bob Samba was playing like shit, and he didn't play that well. He played okay, and he needed to blow people's you know dicks off, and he didn't. <laughs> and so that's where Horvath, if he were playing, I think regularly he'd be on this roster, and it wouldn't be uh, Sean Johnson. But yep. maybe he wouldn't have because of the Rona protocols as well. That mm-hmm. played into it for him. Sure. Um, but okay, so goalkeepers, no big deal. Um, defenders, um, again, the only thing that's really shocking here is that outside of Anthony Robinson, all we have is Bello, and you already yeah. brought that up, yep. and that's a shock. And the shock, other shock, is more got called up after not really being basically benched and playing rare minutes for Tenerife. Hey, so, but let's talk about a positive on the defense. Burhalter yes. called in Richards. Hey, oh, he did call in Richards. <laughs> that was great. I'm, I was really happy to see that. Yeah. So props. We all knew Tim Ream was probably coming. I think we both predicted. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, John Brooks is going to be really interesting since he's playing so poorly for his club right now. He's having like one of those bad little 
uh, stints. Like he didn't have like one of these bad stints last season when Wolfsburg was killing it. I mean, he had one or two games out of the whole season. I thought, oh boy, that was. Well, a bad I mean, game. that's the bad stint started during our our window. Yeah, so they um, did. maybe maybe that's maybe that funk got in his mind. And he's still working it out. You know, who knows? I mean, that and that's when we'll get to our starting eleven, and uh, that's sort of a hint of <laughs> maybe where I'm headed there. Uh, but. <laughs> Yes, but <laughs> I don't think it's going to be Tim Marine, but, no. uh, but I will say this. Um, I did think Miazga got kind of fucked. I know he just got to Alaves, um, uh, but I also know um, that he's played really well in the last game he just had versus oh, Atletico. Killer. Killer. I mean, it was great. I don't know how you leave a guy off this roster and then bring in... Um, I don't know who you got to be. Rid of. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you have a look, if you're looking between McKenzie and Reem, it's got to be Reem in that sense. But or you bring thirty and you just bring fucking Miazga. Or yeah, there we go. There's another option. I don't care how <laughs> how how you thought uh, how hard the the dog kick was from you know from Miazga's to Berhalter's dog. No, it, I, it was a gentle tap as far as I heard. Tin, it. So tinfoil had me. Yeah, too uh, full ahead of me. I almost wonder if it, if it's a uh, a financial situation, and uh, they're they're basically Berhalter's like I want to bring uh, thirty five players, and USSF is going money. I'll give you twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dude, tin foil hat, but I wouldn't. It, put if it Bolivia it. can pay for fifty three, then we can pay for tw- <laughs> for thirty. Yeah. Um, hell, we could probably pay for 69, which is the number I was shooting for. Um, but, you know, maybe this rift that I, speaking of tinfoil hat, have had for a long time um, that I think there is between Miazga and Berhalter. Yeah. I, we talk I'm, about it all the time. I'm making dog it. kicking it, Miazga. We understand. It's real, dude. And it's not just the dog kicking thing. <laughs> it's other things, too. It's about how comfortable... Um, um, Greg feels about having a player that is exactly almost a physical replication of Brooks, but isn't quite as good as Brooks and can't play with his left foot. So there you go. But Fine, still, Brooks can't really play with his right foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's a weird situation. Um, but um, for the most part, I'm not like any, I'm not shocked about defenders. I mean, it's fine. No, the only, the only shocker was uh, was Scally missing. Yeah, yeah, let's move on to those midfielders. Midfielders. Hey, man, there's some good news there, too. Luca De La Torre yeah. got called up. Eunice Musa got call, called up. Neither of them will start the first game. Um, yeah. But, and, and you know, they're all obviously both considered probably lesser players than Acasa and Legette to Greg. But at least they're on the roster. Uh, they're probably underneath Roll Don, too, would be my guess. But, mm. um, you know, Tyler Adams is going to be there. Wesson McKenney's back. Okay, mm-hmm. so, yeah. you know. That whole slipping Pulisic's uh, daughter, the the grand salami. No, uh, cost daughter, that daughter. Man, this is the second time you fucked this up, man. What did I say? <laughs> you said daughter. <laughs> oh, Pulisic doesn't have a daughter. My that, God, that his would sister. Be so fucked up in so many ways, but. <laughs> no. So yeah, it's, it's funny because this this, this, this uh, rumor slash joke that's going about. I mean, a joke on our end at least. Mm-hmm. Um, it has you totally you totally bonked. Uh, I fucked it up uh, t- uh, twice now. Two jokes, I know. two different episodes. <laughs> I get nervous when I say, you know, things like that about because, yeah. you know, I just hope that someday when we're asking Polisic for an interview, he's like, yeah, but you talked about my sister. Slash the nicest daughter. Way, Derek, yeah, <laughs> Derek's only talked about the USS men's national team running a train on her once. Come on. <laughs> That was purely accidental. <laughs> it was not on purpose. I was not saying there was like a bu- bukkake gangbang thing happening there. It just, the sentence was very poor. So, Christian, please. Poorly constructed for the yeah. English major. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what was in play there. I don't even need to say. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, All so, right. <laughs> midfielders, Acosta, Adams, uh, Busio. Nice to see him included. Uh, as well, Luca De La Torre, uh, Legette, of course, we expected. McKenney, we didn't know, but yes, he's on there. Really nice to see Moose on there. And then we got uh, Christian Roldan. Who got fucked, though, is the question. And in the Somebody, midfield? In the midfield. Somebody got hmm. fucked. Green. Green got fucked. I, was gonna, I have Green listed, but I wasn't sure if you were going to list him as a forward or a midfielder. Because I had him listed as a midfielder. Fuck up. You know, uh, 
omission, yeah. if you will. Yeah, I, I you know it's kind of hard to say um, yeah. where Greg would play him, but I you're probably right. He'd play him as a winger because he's really more. Of we a could game. use the depth of winger too, though. So, I uh, yeah, yep. And that, but, that's we we've got we had four capable players right now. We're missing two of our key players, but you know having Green there would have would have been nice to have somebody to fall back on either in the midfield or on the wing. I the only guess I can this is my only thought is that you know Greg's watched some of the recent games i mean he played pretty good against Bayern, but he had a real stinker the game before and then he was dropped for a game so but you know greg's going to look for any excuse to get rid of a player who isn't um you know a part of the ball snuggling crew mm-hmm. and those guys you know anybody new like that throwing anybody new and getting them acclimated and into the team which would have been nice didn't want to do it and um Maybe they had the talk, and Green said, well, if I'm coming, am I going to play? And Greg said, maybe not. And he said, well, fuck it, I don't want to go then. But I doubt that conversation happened. Highly of course, doubtful. we'll never know because we can't get a hold of the whole presser, and I doubt anyone asked that during the presser. So, oh, we didn't talk about Araujo. Nope, one called, or we was called, or Greg called him, and Julian said, nah, again. And if he said, well, nah. Again, again, yeah, it's it, he. He came out. He stated initially that he was going to have a decision made by October. So either he listened to us and said, "Hey, dude, there's no rush," or this is a clear indication that he's playing for Mexico. So, well, he thinks he's playing for Mexico. Well, <laughs> he, he's alive. <laughs> uh, he, he's waiting for his one-time switch to finalize. Let's put it that way. Maybe so. And if so, good luck, Julian. Um, you know, sorry you dropped out so early or made that decision so early. I think you're going to regret it, and I think Ochoa is going to regret it too, frankly, down the road. Um, All right, so I think that's it for the midfield. I mean, it's just nice Mm -hmm. to see some guys like Musa and De La Torre on the team. We've been calling for De La Torre for months now, Mm -hmm. and uh, he's finally there. Interesting to see. Yeah, well, interesting to see how Busio um, works things. Um, Where where Busio plays? Yeah. Because do you really give him the six? No, I wouldn't. With, with Adams and Acosta there? No, at this point, no he's, a, he's, an eight, he's an eight for me. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think he's going to play six. I can't, um, I, can't see, I can't see a game where he's going to be a sole six. So Yeah, and now we get to the position where a lot of guys had to bend over, grab their ankles, and take it straight up the anal cavity. <laughs> um, it's serious. So graphic. Dude. That just painted a picture right <laughs> in my mind. I mean – what is going on here is we are only bringing six forwards again. Derek, have, you been, have you been searching my, have you been looking at my search history? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you as soon as we, after the first game, we will have five forwards. One of these guys is going to get injured. And if oh, Ariola, geez, who could it be? Who Ariola, could it be? How's that one? I'm gonna I, I've, been, I've been saying all day that he is one, he is one cut away from another six month injury. <laughs> just, yes. I okay. feel bad for the guy, but, but, but that's just how it is. Unfortunately. There are three guys that are injury prone here uh, more recently. All right. There's Paul Ariola, who's been injury prone for a long time. So that's nothing new. But you've got um, um, uh, uh, Zardes, who was recently injured. He doesn't get injured all the time, but that was a long stint of injury for him, uh, considering his career. And then Timothy Weah, I mean, the, the wind blows and he gets injured. So you've got three out of your six forwards who... I don't know how much confidence you can have. All three of them are going to make it through game one unless they don't play or they might get hurt in practice. So bringing six is absolutely <laughs> stupid here. Stupid. Stupidity. And, uh, they're, uh, yeah. they're going to play whatever soccer version of flag football is. What's that? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Well, oh, you got a visitor. No, it's uh, my first. It's my, uh, my uh, Alexa randomly talking to me. Oh no shit. I thought that was one of your kids in the background. Oh, how creepy. Alexa, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and now anybody who has who has one of those devices, I'm not gonna say her name again. Are yeah. I'm like when I said it the first time, they probably all perked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Yeah. Uh sorry that's, if that happens. That's almost folks. as bad as saying Xbox off. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oops! Hey, you just you just ruined someone's fucking day right there. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, what? Man, I have some serious <laughs> Xbox complaints, but I'm not going to make them here. I'm not going to air my dirty laundry Xbox dirty laundry here. 
You fucking took Forza off the f- free list. Fuck oh, you guys. Bastard. All right. Yeah. Um, so we, we talked. We talked about Sergeant and P Fox missing. I, I'm, it's kind of perplexing that P Fox not there. He's scoring goals. Why would you not bring in a striker who's hot? Might as well. You had you know? endless spaces. <laughs> We left yeah. off Conrad De La Fuente. You brought up the fact that there are at least two wingers on this roster who could possibly be injury prone. At least. And yeah, yeah. I mean, so you, you didn't bring Conrad. Why? I don't know. I mean, listen, okay. The guys that are on here are like, I love Brendan Aronson. Of course, he must be brought in. Paul Areola. Five goals in 10 games. He's our, he's our big, he's our big, uh, big offensive threat. Paul Areola. I mean, really, come on. I know he just came back. I told you guys in a later, earlier show, not a later show, not no time traveling here, that Ariola was going to be on this list. Yep. And I told you Zardis was going to be on this yep. list. We knew and they are here. So, Ariola's Ari- on there. So, the weird thing is, is that Ariola's had some okay performances with us relatively recently. Not saying that of recently, but he wasn't that great in the Gold Cup before he got injured. Yep. He's and just a hard now he's worker. Back. Yeah, and that, that's predominantly it. He, yep. uh, he's God, a hard I mean, uh, worker. Over the last handful of performances, man, he couldn't lay across to save his life. And I mean, that's mm-hmm. that, that's got to be, as a winger, that's got to be your bread and butter or wing back. Those two positions have got to be able to lay across on a fucking dime. I don't understand how hard it is. Yeah, the number of people these days in modern soccer who can't cross a fucking ball to save their lives. That was just soccer 101 when I played high school soccer in mm-hmm. the 80s. You had to be able to cross a ball. I mean, it's unbelievable how bad people are. It doesn't have to be now. perfect, but don't don't kick it so high and so hard that it goes out for a throw without bouncing. How many times does that happen? <laughs> like people can do a cross yeah, I mean, and it, it literally goes straight out for a goal kick. They're so fucking bad at it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like that is not taught anymore. No, Dude, we would spend, we would spend, I would spend probably 20 minutes of practice taking corner kicks. 20 yeah. minutes. It's, it's, I mean, it was like, that like, serious. It's the, equi- it's the equivalent of taking uh, of taking free throw shots, you know, in basketball. It is. And before it was practice important. Ends, you, put, uh, you put 10 away before you leave or whatever. Yep. Um, okay. Matthew Hoppy's on this list. This is fantastic. And excuse us for not pronouncing Mallorca correctly. <laughs> All right. And if they said that, I go, of course. Now oh, that makes total sense. Oh. I, I thought you did say Mallorca, frankly. No, I, I did it's, too much of a mall, Mallorca. It, it's you too know? hard to hear on this system. Yeah. So I thought you said it right. So fuck all you guys. Excuse me that, uh, you know, we didn't get that right. But again, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just going to go on the list of my mispronunciations. <laughs> I guess, I'm guaranteed to have one every week, maybe every two weeks. Oh, I'm man. Sam had a bad one today, a really bad it, one. Uh, uh, Venezia? Yes, he was. Uh, he did uh, uh, Venezia. Venezia. It was a, he, had a, he added a ch to his Venezia. 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 Yeah, he, I don't he know if that's from, accurate or not, or if I were accurate saying Venezia, but I'm saying Venezia no. because you said it was Venezia. Dude, I looked it up just to make sure. <laughs> I am right. It's Venezia. All right, that's how it's properly pronounced. Sam, don't worry about it, dude. No big deal on our That'll end. Welcome to we, the party, pal. Yeah, we fuck those things up all the time. <laughs> um, well, Brett does. Um, I fuck them up on occasion. So, but I don't you just, get you, things... just, you just fuck up the rumors. Do you fuck up on? I don't fuck them up. I think that they're tangentially connected with reality, even though they're made up. So I would, I would, I would absolutely hate to go back to the whole uh, Pulisic sister slash daughter thing. So, <laughs> well, I hope people enjoyed that incredible s- screw up and it, that was a screw up. I was so p- poorly worded. I mean, I was pretty, you know what, at the time. Um, and I'm pretty lit at this point too. So, all right. Cause I had to speed up the lit process cause we're doing the show earlier today than we usually do. So I was just like, okay. Technically I'll... speaking, we don't even start the show for another five to 10 minutes. I know. Usually we don't. So and what, we're, we're early. about 30 minutes into this episode. We cut we're this morons. Off, <laughs> all right. Let's do the forwards then. Uh, we were doing the forwards. Uh, Peppy's there. That's great. Yep. yep. Way is great it's great that he's there he just he's coming off a, coming great off a game. hot game yep yes. absolutely solid what's the uh, player of the there. week player of the week player he was he was on he was on uh he was on the the <laughs> starting whatever the 11 of the week for uh league uh, yeah uh so yeah he was there yep 
Zardis, okay, yeah, we we'd expected that. Sure. And I think I mentioned last show he just scored, so yeah, he's been scoring. The, the, so guy, the guy, the guy, the guy. As much if you like him or dislike him, it doesn't matter because he <laughs> he does well enough and he performs when he plays for the United States. He might right. not be the perfect game, and he might not get a goal or an assist, but he does well enough, and he 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 shows up at random times, and he saved our butt a lot of the times in the Gold Cup. So, yeah. And, yeah. and we, we mentioned no Conrad. We mentioned no PFOC. We mentioned no Sergeant. How about no Gio Caccini either? And yeah, that was a weird time. one. I would, have, yeah. I would love to have Gio Caccini in here. I mean, just as an extra guy. So you have seven forwards or eight forwards to mess with and to integrate. So, okay, that's my biggest complaint. Otherwise, the roster's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, barring the fact that Pulisic and Brain are gone. And I'm not panicked about they're, it. They're, they're, still they're, win. It's, it's as fine as it can be with some quibbles. So yes, we we I think we quibbled. We quibbled. We we did. We <laughs> quibbled. I yes, we you I we quibbled on this. So and you know what? If you aren't quibbling, if you're just like one of those guys who, you know, you like, USA, you just USA. Yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah. I'm, come on, <laughs> it's it's more complex than that. You got. And listen, this isn't breaking in. I mean, I'm not going into deep depression about any no. of this, and neither is Brett. This is fun <laughs> for us. I have we alcohol enjoy- for that. Yeah, we enjoy this. <laughs> but, it, you know, it isn't schadenfreude either. We're not, like, enjoying the fact that... It's not all sunshine and rainbows, people. It isn't. There are, th- there are things to complain about. There are things to quibble about. And then we're not... We're our, our biggest. Compl- I don't know if this is your biggest complaint. I mean, you brought the the, the number of forwards, but I think Scally uh, Scally omission was my biggest complaint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But outside that, and, again, I think the roster is perfectly fine. And given the fact that we're missing two of our key starters, um, and we had the opportunity of missing Adams and possibly Moose. I don't know. Obviously, nothing was. No, there was nothing about that whole quote unquote injury rumor there. Um, but we had we had we had a possibility that we were going to get into this window with like three or four players, key players missing. And that would have sucked, but so it is what yeah. it is. And, you know, we, it we is. have to play through it. And and we aren't going to take pleasure in any of Burhalter's pains. Some of you do. And I don't think that's healthy having that kind of feeling. Um, we want our team to do well. We want them to succeed. And I think we have the players on this roster to do it. There just should have been more of them. That's yeah. all. And and, it, and, here, and this is, this is the thing to squash other points is that <laughs> other points of contention with us. If we we are we sometimes we get overly critical about Legette or if we get overly critical about Rodon or Acosta or insert any number of player here, uh, if we get overly critical on them, we're not hoping that they fail when they're on the pitch. We're hoping that they prove us wrong, and yes. we are more than happy to come back the next episode and eat crow in front of everybody. We love that's what crow. we want. We want that. We don't, wanna, we don't want to. We don't want to have. Oh, Rodon's going to ruin us, and he goes out there and scores three own goals. We don't want that. Yep. We'll shovel that crow. It tastes like chicken, anyhow. Mm-hmm. So, and I love chicken. Cooked properly, yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to do it. So make sure you like, subscribe, share it with your mom. Visit our Patreon page because it exists and we have people there now, which is nice. So mm-hmm. do that. And um, hit that uh, the, notification button. Yes, do. And the best thing about all this is we can end the segment by saying we're not really worried. We're not worried about Pulisic and Raina missing. We're not. I'm more worried about other things, but not them missing. All right. Take care. We'll see you for segment two, where we'll break down possible starting lineup based on this roster. 